our guest speaker for this morning. He has been here for uh, for a long time. Uh, maybe some of you have known him. Some of you maybe forgotten him. Uh, okay. So let me introduce uh, our speaker. Graduated at IBC Emmanuel Bible College, uh, taking up bachelor in Christian Ministry, major in Biblical Studies in 1980s, uh, and took up his Master of Arts in Theology at APTS in the 90s. And he has been a youth director, a pastor, a mission director, and many more. Uh, marami siyang talent, hindi lang yan. So you want to get to know him, you approach him, and you will know uh, what other things that he's been busy for. Okay? And I know him for several years, and I have worked uh, with him also uh, during uh, our... Uh, during the 19... Kopong Kopong. <laughs> He's still young. Uh, young at heart. Okay. And he is a strategist. No? Uh, disciple maker. And also a good administrator. And a motivational speaker. Uh, aside uh, from him coming here, he also brought his lovely wife. Uh, let me introduce Mary Ann Bautista Sira, right? And uh, our guest speaker has three sons. Tatlo lang, no? Uh, tatlo, tatlong lalaki, uh, sons. And uh, so I think that's all that I can introduce, and later he will add more. So let us welcome um, Pastor Jerry Balbuena. Thank you, Pastor James. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. It's good to be back in Manila. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was right. Uh, I was here, I was here like, it was just five, five years after Noah got off the ark. <laughs> so I forgot. But uh, I've been around, live in Quezon City, and then Quezon City kicked me out. So we are now living in Des Marinas in Cavite. Uh, at least for my, for our retirement. Now, if you want to know more about me, I cook good barbecue. That's, that's the thing. okay. Well, <laughs> how should I start? I'm so grateful for your theme, power to witness for Christ. That is really what is needed right now. When I was still in my high school, I mean, every time our pastor will say, "Okay, let's go out evangelize and witness for him," we will just get a pack of trucks and then distribute it to everyone that we meet. And then after that, pag naubos na yung trucks, okay, I already have done evangelism. Not anymore this time. Because right now, the world is watching us, Christians, whether we really believe what we are talking about. But a lot of times we found it so easy to just say, okay, I have done this, I have done that, I have. But the question is, our readiness and our willingness to walk the talk. So, when Pastor James asked me, uh, scheduled me for this day to come, and he said, okay, what's the emphasis? And he said, it's all more about evangelism, more about in, in connection with Pentecost. And I said, wow, that is great. That's powerful. And uh, I praise the Lord for this time that I can free my week. I can free my Sundays. Uh, actually, since since May, I have been free <laughs> because I already have retired from the General Council and uh, the Assemblies of God. So I praise the Lord for that. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, it is always with gratitude in our hearts that we always come to you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity that we can come to your presence. Not only come to your presence, Lord, but even ask your Holy Spirit to empower us. Not only with the words, but much more, O oh God, 
in our lives. How we conduct our day-to-day -day activities. We also believe, Lord Jesus, that your words are always anointed. But right now we are asking, O oh Lord, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, for the anointing from your word to flow freely to each of our hearts, Lord. That as we begin to look into your words, Lord, open our hearts and our minds. That we will not just be looking at this Sunday, Lord, and we say, okay, we had a good time. But Lord, as we move forward, we can always look back to this Sunday and we'll say, Lord, you have spoken to us. Father, I pray that you're going to empower our witness. But most of all, O oh Lord, make us worthy to be vessels that can contain your anointing. And this I pray, Lord, speak to us, prepare our hearts, anoint the lips of your servant as we're going to feast into your words this morning. We will come out full. And this we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a few Sundays ago, we have celebrated uh, uh, Pentecost Sunday. Okay? I, I think it's more than a month now. And a lot of people are confused. What does Pentecost mean? Some, can you imagine? I just, I just came from, I mean, I just came two weeks ago from, from Mindanao. And then there were pastors who talked to me and they said, Okay, so what does, what's really the difference between Pentecostals and Evangelicals? I said, there's nothing. There's none. Because Pentecostals, we belong to the Evangelical group. Only, only the difference, the, the slight difference right there is, we believe that the Holy Spirit is given, endowed to each one of us to empower everything that we do. Because since we receive Christ, we're not living on our own. We're not talking. We're not speaking on our own. We're not speaking for our own selves. We're always speaking for Christ. Everywhere we go, we are representing Christ. And a lot of times, the problem is, we found that there are a lot of problematic scriptures or portions in the scriptures. Let me just point out some. That might be a surprise to some, to, to some of us. Can we have the PowerPoint, please? Okay? Did this happen, ever happen to you? That you pack all your children one Sunday morning in a car, in a rainy day, and then everybody's prepared. Your wife has already put on all those makeup and all those eyeliners and all those mascara, whatever. You went to the garage and your car will not even start. It's raining. And then you look at the you look at your watch. You only have like about twenty five minutes before church church service begins. What will you do? So, as a good father, you will just hail a taxi in the rain, and then put everyone in that cramp, everyone in that little taxi, and then you have to hurry home. After church service, because you have to look for a mechanic to fix your car. Am I right? Because Monday is coming. So finally, you went to the shop. Then it's open on a Sunday afternoon. And then you, uh, you told the mechanic, this is the problem. It won't start. It won't start. And then the mechanic will not even look at you in the face. He will just say, okay, okay, we can do that. That's just easy. Just bring your car here. A lot of times, that has been the problem. Because even if you are going to open your Bibles, I mean, there's a lot of things right there that are very, I will say, very impossible demands. Okay? Look, for example, in the Old, in the Old Testament, we're always told, uh, can I make this arrangement that when I point 
we'll do like that. Okay, the next, that means the next frame, please. The Old Testament tells you what you should do, what you should not do. There is even a penalty if you fail to do it. Have you, have you read that in your Old Testament? But you were not told anything that will help, that will aid you, that will empower you to do those things. Now, I found that bad news. You know why? I'm told to do this. And I'm not, I am expected to build a building. And I, I am not even given the privilege to study engineering. Even the Sermon on the Mount. Who among us here wants to be, I mean, you love to be called poor in spirit. Pastor James, you, you love that? <laughs> huh? Blessed. And yet the Bible says, okay, it is blessed. Can you imagine? I, every time I, I, I made, one time I made a serious study, a series of sermons and Sermon on the Mount. And I said, man, Lord, this is very impossible to do. I mean, it's easy reading. It's easy to claim that, okay, I'm blessed if I do this. And a lot of times I just found myself faking just to be blessed. The precepts are beautiful. The ideals are noble. The metaphors are magnificent. But good news, man, that is very impossible. Another one. When Jesus was talking to his disciples, he, I mean, they watched him raise a couple of guys back to life. When they were following. He, I mean, they saw him healing the sick, cleansing the lepers. And then I can just imagine if all the disciples, Pastor James, were just were, were like me, they would say, Wow, wow, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. If I have a cell phone, then I will just be taking selfie all the time. Wow, it's good to be to be in a good company. And yet at the end, Jesus said, Greater things you are going to do than this. For sure you have read that in your in your Bibles. And he said, Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is this true? <laughs> Lord, is this true? Are, are you okay? Greater things you are going to do than this? Well, by design, that is really what the Lord wanted us to do and accomplish in this life. Not just coming to church, not just singing in the choir, not just dancing for the Lord. No. God wants to manifest His power through us. God wants the world to see how good it is to be in the presence of the Lord. But we are caught in between. Because the Bible says you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And yet we are still in this our humanness. Na kapag inubirtikan ka, pwede bang magtagalog? I'm a Cebuano, but uh, I use a little, uh, the, the older, little Tagalog that I learned. Okay. Na kapag inubirtikan ka ng motor at kinat ka sa harapan, nagagalit ka. Sabihin mo, hindi. <laughs> and yet you are the salt of the earth. <laughs> huh? Minsan nga binababaan mo pa nga sa bint- binababaan pa nga ng bintana. Sasabihin mo pa doon, Hoy, kung gusto kang magpakamatay, sabihin mo na. <laughs> How I wish we are living in, in our glorified bodies. Pero hindi. Kung hindi lang ata gawa ng bakal yung manibela ng kotse, pambihira. Basag-basag na. This life, we are still in this. But yet the Lord wanted to display His power through us. 
And that's the, that's, that's the dilemma for everyone. Because scripture is full of demands which are, which are un, I mean, untenable without the power of the Holy Spirit. And because the Lord Jesus knew it and he saw it. Next friend, please. He knew that they needed power. That's why in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, Okay, the Holy Spirit is coming. He will empower your witness. He will speak for you. He will do all this, provide you all this. But you know what? You have to wait for it. Because waiting is part of our Christian discipline. And in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, now we learn the story. And I don't have to preach on that because I'll be talking to you about empowered witness. The reason being the Holy Spirit is given to empower us, to empower our witness. The reason being why the, the Lord Jesus made an explicit I mean, uh, demand telling them, okay, you wait until the Holy Spirit has come to empower you. And then, sumunod, you will be my witnesses. We are not just, every time we do our witnessing, every time we evangelize, we are not just following a program. And we are not supposed to be just doing it as a program because ito po yung emphasis ng church namin. But let me begin with these words, that good advice without power is bad news. This is the reason why we are, we are giving the Holy Spirit to empower us. Because we may have the precepts, we may have all this, we have memorized, it might be that we have memorized the whole scriptures. But still, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in us. I will say this, that the Pentecost is not just a name. It is not just something that we can add to our ID that we are Pentecostals. Because we belong to the Assemblies of God. Now, some people have this misconstrued understanding that if they are singing charismatic songs, then they are Pentecostals. No. It's not that way. It's not that way. It is how often we depend on the Holy Spirit's empowerment in everything that we do. Let me read to you a, a portion of the scriptures. In Acts chapter 4, in Acts chapter 4, it is recorded right there, in starting in verse 32. Now listen, I will just read it to you carefully from the New Living Translation. That all the believers were united in heart and mind. I love that. I have been with the Assemblies of God for 42 years. And I have been in full-time ministry for 37 years. But this is always what I believe. That all the believers, and this is what I desire to happen. All the believers were united in heart and mind. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the, 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 the explicit result when all the believers will be having one mind and one heart? And then it went on. It is Luke recording this one. And they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. The apostles... The leaders, the pastoral staff, the ministry heads, they testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's great blessing was upon them all. The result was this. There were no needy people among them. Wow. Why? Because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to us or those who are in need. Now let me just give you a little background to, to provide a matrix for this story. This is the second event 
that the Holy Spirit was manifested by a, I mean, it, it landed on people that they spoke in tongues. But it says right there that when the Holy Spirit came, the whole place shook. Okay? But the reason, the reason we are giving emphasis, the, the, the story behind it is, after the day of Pentecost, every day, every day, thousands of people were coming to the Lord. Because on the day of Pentecost, for 50 days, there were a lot of foreigners who were coming to Israel to witness the festivities. And then the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost in the temple. Okay? And there was an enormous revival that happened. And you know, whenever Judaizers or members of Judaism will come to the Lord, they choose to, they identified with the, the cult, cult, which is the way. And the leader of that cult, they, they just crucified 50 days ago. It was Jesus. They were being ostracized. Think about that. There were thousands of people after the day of Pentecost that were ostracized by their families because they followed the way. Here is a 50-day-old church. Ano pangalan nun? United Bethel Church in Jerusalem. 50 days old. They were faced with this dilemma. The apostles were always preaching, testifying to the glory and the power of the Lord Jesus. And here is a flock of people who are needing help. Because they were ostracized, where will they stay? What will they eat? It is not demanded that we, for us to become good Christians, we have to sell everything that we have and give it to the church. No. That is not the way. But there, there was an enormous need. And the church, whether it is just 50 days old or not, they have to minister to those needs. This is what, is, what happened right here that we are reading in Acts chapter 4. And yet, look, huh? The writer of the book of Acts, he was not even a Jew. This was, just this was just related to him. And he wrote the book of Acts. And he said, and there was no needy people among them. Wow. That's empowered evangelism. Not just leading people to the Lord. No. 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 There should be a heartfelt commitment from our end that we are not just napaubusan lang tayo ng tracks. And then we have done evangelism. It should not be. And, okay. Look went on. He said, for instance, there was Joseph. Now Joseph, who was later called Barnabas, he did not even come from, Je from Jerusalem. He was not a resident in the area. He was from the neighboring island called Cyprus. He went there because of his Jewish heritage to be part of the pen, I mean the, 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 the feast that they were celebrating. And then he was one of those who came to the Lord, who witnessed all these things that are happening. And he Ha ha. Okay, so we say. Hindi ko dala credit card ko eh. At saka hindi ko mabayaran. So ito na lang gawin ko. Ibinta ko na lang yung lupa ko na nabili ko dyan ng estudyante pa ko. And then I will sell it. I mean, I sell it and give it, give it to the church. Wow. Wow. That's how, look, put it down. 
Because we're talking about empowered evangelism. And abundant grace was upon them all. People were not counting how much have they given. People were not counting how, how much, how many thousands or even millions of pesos they have put in there. No. If they were just looking at the need. And they said, okay, there is a little something that I can do to, to address this need. And I will do it. Actually, that also added another layer to their witnessing. We have to understand, okay, that as the, 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 the early church, the spirit empowered just experienced grace. <laughs> the apostles, listen, the apostles continued to offer powerful testimony about the resurrection of Jesus. They never stopped. That was the time that they also appointed some elders in the church to serve, to, to, to alleviate the ministerial activities so that their witnessing, their empowering, their preaching will not be hampered. But again, here is, I, I, I put it down, that the people were of one heart and soul. It's true. They practice generosity. That's true. And one of one example of that is Barnabas, as we have just read. He was called, he was not called Barnabas to, to begin with. He was his name was Joseph. They experienced that. You know why? That their Witnessing their evangelism was so empowered, not only by the power of the Holy Spirit, not only, on, I mean, because they have, they have, I mean, they are now ministering after the day of Pentecost. No, the truth is that when the Spirit of God invades a life, what inevitably happens is that our grip on other things is loosened while our attachment to people is strengthened. Believe me, when Barnabas saw this property, give, brought all the money, put it in the apostles' feet, he was not being political. Why? During this time, they were not even voting for who will be the deacon number one and deacon number two and deacon number three. It's not in their vocabularies yet. <laughs> it was not. But that's the truth. That whenever the Spirit of God invades our lives, what happens is our grip on material things will be loosened and our attachment to people and their needs will be strengthened. That's really what Jesus is practicing. And that, is, that was really what Jesus was talking about. And that's the reason why he said, wait for the Holy Spirit. Because he will be the one to empower your witness. But you have to wait and don't go, don't do anything until you will have this experience. I just put Acts chapter 1 verse 8. In an expanded version right there. That's PJB's version. On Acts 1.8. Why? As I have said. As I have said. Presets. Without power. Is bad news. And God knows that. That's why he gave the Holy Spirit. But we have to be very careful. Because in the church, in our communities, Christian communities, there are also deceitful people. In fact, I will say that deceit is one of those rust that is really eating the church. Yung pagpapanggap. Because if we have Barnabas in our church, there is also in Acts chapter 5 verses 1 to 10, there is, there is a couple named Ananias and Sapphira. It's there. 
The story went on. Ananias and Sapphira, they were one of those well-to-do people in Jerusalem. They already have witnessed some of Jesus' miracles. So when the church started, they were there. They were known by the apostles and those new believers in the church. And then here comes this guy from Cyprus. Did all this. And the church made the announcement. Baka inilagay pa nga sa bulletin board. Baka sa announcement, may video pa doon, may AVR pa nakalagay. We are so grateful for Brother Barnaba, Brother Joseph for giving this much to our Abba. Even if this is a spirit-empowered church, be very careful and don't be one of those like Barnabas and Sapphira. Because Barnabas and Sapphira, when they heard the news, when they, when they saw the AVR, when they, when, they, when they read the posting right there in the bulletin board, nag-uusap yung mag-asawa, sabi na, hindi tayo magpatalo. Tayo yung taga rito, pambihira naman. <laughs> sabi Okay, they sold a bigger piece of land and just they brought money to the treasury of the church that is higher, even might be double than what Joseph or Barnabas did. Okay? And then they pretended. This was the problem. They pretended that that was the full amount of the property that they sold. Believe me. My time is almost over, but uh, believe me. In the church, this spirit also exists. How I wish, how I wish that in UBC, there is a spiritual life scanner by the door as we enter. And then, tutunog yan. Tapos papasok doon sa computer. Sasabihin ka agad ni Pastor. Oh, ah, ah, Brad, 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 Brad. Huwag ka munang pumasok dyan sa sanctuary. Doon ka muna. You need counseling. They sininghalan mo si Mrs. nung Martis eh. Nagsinungaling ka sa negosyo nung nung Merkulis eh. Whoa, how I wish. But you know what? Now, what I'm saying is, we're talking about empowered evangelism. And I will, I will talk about that in the next five minutes before, I, before my time is up. The, the church is, I mean, God is challenging us. And the decision is always on us. That's what, that's what Peter told Ananias about. He said, if you're going to read chapter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, Peter said, Nyas! Eh, Ananias eh. Di ba, anong palayaw ni Ananias? Nyas! Pangit naman, sabihin mong an. Oh, Brad na lang. Brad! Pabira ka naman. Ba't ka naman ang padala doon? Hindi po ba? Isn't it that the whole property was yours? Nobody was demanding that from you? Selling it or not, it was your decision. And even when it was sold, the money was still yours to decide whether you have to give it all or not. But why do you have to deceive people for causing them to believe that this is the full amount? You could have been honest before God. You said, okay, you sold your property and you give a portion. But the reason, be, the, the reason being is because somebody, Joseph, did it first. He sold his property, small as it was, but he brought the whole, the whole amount. At ayaw mo magpatalo. Brad, diyan ka nagkasala. And that is what destroys our witness. That kind of a spirit And I will say that the church suffered a lot because of that.
God wanted the early church to be warned. And he took that sin of deceit seriously. Okay. Because, uh, forward please. The next two frames. There is something about sin of deceit that God especially hates. Okay. Perhaps, uh, dalawang, dalawang for, yeah, that's it. And then one more. There you go. Perhaps that's because deceit is especially destructive to the fellowship and unity of God's people. Whenever unity is destroyed and whenever the fellowship is destroyed, our witness is destroyed. Because the people who are reading our lives, the people who are observing us, they are not going to go to the, I mean, they are not going to go anywhere and post something, but they will just say, ganyan bang kristyano? Ganyan pala? And they say this visually prevalent in churches. The next frame, please. The, do you know the reason why? As presented right here in Acts chapter 4. Because we have such standards. We, we have, the church have such high standards. Even without demanding it. We know that if we are Christian, you should not do this, you should not do that. You should not do this, ganito dapat. Because of the standards. And Joseph or Barnabas raised that standard. Ananias and Sapphira notice it as well. And they allowed and as, I mean, Peter was right. He had, he crafted the right words. Why did you allow Satan to deceive you? Well, we often wear a mask. Look at this. We often wear a mask of spiritually to hide our sin as we come to church. That's uh, one click. Then another one. And we may be struggling with problems in our homes. But we hide it. Why? Eh, jakuno pa naman ako eh. Leader pa naman ako. Baka malaman ng iba. <laughs> the next one, please. Our desire for acceptance can cloud our judgment, making us more concerned with what others see than what God sees. Folks, this might be different than what we expected about witnessing. But we already have received a lot of trainings on how to witness, how to evangelize, how to use the right words. There are people who come up with evangel, evangelic cube. There are people who come up with some stories. I mean, when, when I was still the national youth director, I mean, we came up with a lot of, well, a lot of stuff about evangelism, leading people to the Lord. I will not delve into that. I want, to delve, I, I want to dwell on the idea that there are things that Satan is still winning is because he kept us from being fruitful. But the good news is the Holy Spirit is given. The good news is the Holy Spirit is there to empower us. The good news is the Holy Spirit is there to give us the right words. The Holy Spirit is there to empower us without it when we are struggling with ourselves. The Holy Spirit is given to empower us how to conduct our lives. And sometimes, masasabi na lang natin sa sarili natin na okay, that was not me. And we call it God-ordained moments or kairos. Church, 
We are now living in the end of time. Those things that we read, whether it is this, the writings of Paul or from the book of Revelations, are really happening now. Without a doubt. This generation, I believe, this generation might be the generation that will welcome the second coming. But still, that's good news. The bad news is there are still a lot who have not come to the Lord yet. They are still watching. They are still waiting. And just like the song that was popularized by <clears throat> Kathy Trocholi, They are just singing that song. I want to know what love is. Because they want you to show me. I want you to show me. I want to know what God is. I want you to show me. You're telling me that Jesus loves me. One of those secular singers who's singing that song. And I heard it on TV. She said, you told me that God loves me. You told me that God died for me. But do you really love me? Talk about empowered evangelism. That's it. Talk about empowered evangelism. We have to be very careful. That we can easily slip into sin. So, how to, I mean, to empower our witness, number one. We need to take sin more seriously. Never allowing things to slow us down. Never allowing that we will just be swallowed by programs. And not our hearts. Our hearts are not in it. Second. We need also, we need to cultivate sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost not just to identify us from the rest of the evangelical world. But the Holy Spirit was given to empower us for our witness. And thirdly, let me say this. We need to develop relationships in which we can be open. We can be vulnerable. Because even if we have evangelized somebody, if we are not aiming, if we are not looking forward to disciple them for the Lord, what we have just done is spiritual abortion. I think it is now time that we need to open perhaps our homes, our office to disciple somebody. We call it small groups ministries. We call it discipleship groups. However you want to call it. We have to mentor somebody for the Lord. If we are the Easter's in this generation, the reason why is because there was a Mordecai that was discipling us. Hey, don't just have fellowships or gatherings. I mean, I'm not saying that there's something wrong about it. Ask the Lord, starting today, whom you are going to mentor, whom you are going to disciple for the next six months. Just imagine this. How many of us here in this room? In the next six months, we will be mentoring at least two people, all of us. 
how many people will be there six months after filling all these seats? Early chairs. If there is a mandate, and I will close with this statement. If there is a mandate that Jesus left with his disciples, it was this. Go into all the world. Right? What about if I will tell you that the action word there is not go. But the action word in that statement is that as you go, make disciples of all nations. Because that is really what it means in Greek. That is really what it means when Jesus said it in the original text. That as you go, make disciples. Mentor them. Lead them to grow. Don't just lead them to the Lord. Don't just lead them in sinner's prayer. But lead them to grow in the Lord. Now, Pastor Jerry, well, I am not trained for that. Now, you don't need a training for that. Be yourself. Don't be like Ananias or Sapphira. Be like Joseph or Barnabas. Train somebody. Empower somebody. And witness the exponential growth that the Lord will pour into us. Can we all stand, please? As you are standing, it might be that you're standing with your family, you're standing with your kids, you're standing with your husband, or you're standing with your wife. Can you as a family hold us together? Can you hold hands together? Husband and wife, brothers and sisters can hold hands together. If you are here with your children, grown-up children, you can hold hands together. Even the worship team, you can also respond to this. Because the Lord is very serious when he said, make disciples. Because that is the flip side. That is the other side. That's the end of evangelism. But as you're holding hands together and standing before, I mean, in the Lord's presence, I want you to commit to the Lord your time and then ask the Lord that He will give you people that you can mentor in the next six months, just in the next six months, just before December. Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you, whenever the Holy Spirit will lay a name, a friend, might be a colleague, might be a brother or a sister, might be your parents, might be your children. If the Lord will drop a name, can you mention that as you pray, as you make a commitment before the Lord? Now let's do it. Oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity, oh God, to reflect on your words. And right now, Lord, we're bringing it up, Lord, one step higher. We want to make a commitment before you right now. Then in the next six months, Lord, I will be discipling, I will be mentoring somebody. Not just mentoring them to, to, to do the, 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 the work that I do in the church. No, that is not the thing. Mentoring them, Lord, for them to grow in you. Because that is your design, that is your program, that is your strategy. For all the students right here, Lord, I pray. That you need to lay a name or names of our friends and our classmates in school. That we can lead and disciple for you. 
For every business people, right there, Lord Jesus, I pray, grant them a name that they can mentor for you. For housewives, Lord Jesus, grant them, Lord Jesus, the courage to do it. Because we want to become faithful, made servants for your glory and for your honor. For all of us, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to find joy. Not only in leading somebody to you, but mentoring somebody, discipling somebody for you and for your glory and be glorified. And what Luke describes in chapter 4, verse 31. And the church experienced so much blessing because of that. Father, I pray and I commit to you right now, you be easy. The leadership in this church, all the ministries of God, even those who have not been included... In the promotion a, a while ago, Lord, I pray that you are going to bind us all together. Help us, Lord, to reflect on the things that we should be doing and the top priority of God of our activities as a church. That we will all be, and we will all be with one heart and mind in doing the work of the Lord. Pour down your blessings, Lord Jesus, upon this church. Bless everyone and those whom you have prepared, O oh God, to be added to our numbers. As the book of Acts declared, there will be numbers that will be added to us daily. Clean that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.